Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about business logic and understanding it. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you have any tips on how to understand business logic and flow with none to minimum explanation only from the source code? Thank you. Well, this is, uh, there are things that you can do for sure. Uh, that has a very big impact on your comprehension of the logic that you're dealing with. And I'll give you two, hopefully two, two things that you can kind of play around with. Uh, but I will also say something first and foremost. The problem with only using the source code without any type of explanation is that you're going to have to do something that lovingly is called reverse engineering. And it's not ex as extreme as I mean reversing reverse engineering as finished product like compiled code or anything like that but in essence what you're trying to do is that you're trying to comprehend how a piece of logic a, a program of some sort in this case it's usually a web server right how it functions like how is it intended to work what does it, what does it actually do when you're dealing with it now for a very small system that is usually fairly straightforward. If you just have a few hundred lines of code, it's not that complicated many of the times at the very least to figure out what the code is doing from just reading the source because you simply don't have enough features for it to be all that complicated. For a large system, especially if that system is a distributed system or something like that, it becomes very, very, very tricky very quickly. The, and the reason is not necessarily because the code is more complicated. It's simply that the business logic is what it is. Now, I've worked on multiple projects where the reality of the situation is literally that you have diff so many integrations and different types of batch jobs and cron jobs and so forth that run uh, and perform some type of operation. And the only real way for you to figure out how all of this fits together is to have been there when it was implemented you have to ask somebody who was there or who knows what certain things are doing and what s things are expected. You have to have a conversation, especially if you're dealing with integrations. If, for example, you have a bug when you're doing some type of external network call and they return some type of invalid something something, there's really no way for you to know what's wrong unless there's a very nice error message saying, saying something like invalid API token. Well, then you can probably figure out what's going on, right? But from the source, you can't figure that out, basically. So this is why I argue, like I have what I like to call a minimalist approach to documentation, and that does not mean no documentation, or and it doesn't mean that you document everything. It means that you, uh, as like, like I like to think of it at the very least, you document that which is not inferable from context. In other words, document the things that someone who's going to do the thing that you'll be doing, like the everyday tasks, the everyday contact information of external parties and who do I call if something goes wrong, all of these sorts of things that you cannot just infer from reading the function or the logic in the code, this needs to be documented because otherwise it just lives in the head of the person who wrote it. That is very dangerous because if that person isn't there, there's really no way to figure it out. So, with that said, there are two things that I usually use in order to figure out what's going on if I don't know. The first and foremost thing is to interact with the application and look at the network calls. If you're really lucky, you have a system which you can consume fairly readily in a realistic way. Like if you have, say, a web shop or something like that, you can click around in that web shop. You spin up your own version of it in some environment and then you click and you just check the network tab and look at, and look at okay what are the endpoint calls that are happening when I'm dealing with a certain feature now I don't recommend doing this for the entire system if you go to a new fresh system uh, and you have no idea how it works and you don't have any introduction or anything like that this is like a worst case scenario no onboarding period or like no onboarding process or anything like that then the first thing I th think you should do is just accept that you're going to have to need some time in order to learn the system. And I think that you should go about this in an organic fashion. Don't try to figure out how the whole system works. Try to figure out how the things that are relevant for the first story that you are going to execute 
how does that work? Start there. In other words, let's say for the sake of argument that you have a story to fix a bug with adding a product. Well, then the only thing that you should try to figure out is how do I add a product to the system and what calls what network calls are happening when I try to add that product. You don't have to figure out how all the logging works and all validation and like campaigns or whatever, searching and all this other stuff. Don't try to learn the whole, don't go wide, go deep on the thing that you're doing. And the reason why I think that this is the best way for you is because that means that you can learn how that piece, piece of feature, that feature works. And then when you ship that thing, you actually ship something that is useful to your customers or to your boss. And then you start repeating that process over and over. And by little by little, you will actually learn the entire system. This is much more time efficient and comp for comprehension, it's also more effective than trying to learn the whole system immediately, usually at the very least. So by simply looking at the network calls, you will see that, okay, if I add the product, I go to I, I go to this specific endpoint. Okay, go to that endpoint and then start going through that endpoint. Just look, search for the URL and start looking through the call stack of like what does actually happen when we hit this endpoint. That's a very good way, I think, to learn from your source how a feature works. The second part is very much dependent on how good of a co-worker the other developers who probably were part of writing the source code in the first place how how good have they been at this thing this is why the uh, book clean code is fairly recommended but it's almost a bible i would say for most software developers uh, the professional ones at the very least and it touches on something that is very important and that is the naming convention of the things that you are doing Something that is, uh, it, it should. If you, if we had a license for software development, I truly believe that you should have that thing revoked, if you don't understand the importance of, of uh, semantically meaningful names, and uh, how to actually structure and group code in such a way that you can make it, that you make it searchable. What I mean by that is basically if you have, say, custom integrations or you have something specific that does something specific and someone uses that term, this kind of touches on domain-driven design. If your boss comes to you and says, hey, dude, you, I need you to uh, Im uh, I need you to tweak or implement this foobar, method, foobar functionality in the system and you go, okay, uh, do, do we have anything that sort of is similar to that? Yeah, we have the the uh, the other foobar method or like this other thing that we made just look for that and the you should based on what your customer or, or your boss told you the names or like the the words that they've been using the nouns whatever be able to just say okay there's a foobar module somewhere or there's something called foobar like search for foobar you should now be able if your developers have been doing their job to find files relevant to that business logic. This you might think is very stupidly obvious, like if I have a user a user system module or whatever, then it should probably be called user. And yeah, for a user that's probably fairly straightforward, but you be, will be surprised how many times there are people who are naming things in a very complicated fashion or something that is very unintuitive and so forth. I mean, it's not, nobody's perfect at naming, but you should try to mirror the, no, the that's at least the, the, the core of what the main driven design should be about. Your code should mirror, mirror the business domain language of the company so that when you communicate as a software developer with your stakeholders when they use words that have they without any knowledge of the system you should understand what they're talking about just as when you talk about the system they should sort of understand what you're talking about that is the goal if that has been done correctly you should be able to just by talking to your stakeholder figure out what piece of logic they're talking about and from there you have to kind of trace it okay where is this logic being used sometimes it's a network call sometimes it's more complicated like and then that and there's like different batch jobs or cron jobs or something else that is going on and you kind of have to untangle how the whole how, how the whole thing works so what i want you to take away from this is number one if you are if you have no real documentation or anything like that and you only really have the source code 
first and foremost, you have to understand that not everything is possible to infer from source. You're going to have to trace down some of the information. It's simply that it's, it is that simple. You cannot figure out everything from the source. And if you can't find someone who can answer the questions, you really you, you have to take on pay, pick up your reverse engineer hat and just try stuff out and just try things. It's like debugging the system, as I was saying, reverse engineering the system. That's all you can really do. Number two, uh, try to simulate being a user. If you're trying to figure out a specific feature or something like that, and I highly recommend that you start doing, you do that. Don't try to understand the whole system in a big system immediately. Try to go focus on the the, the features that you are currently working with when you're dealing with a new story and try to understand what are the network calls go to the urls and start tracing the logic on the at the urls to see i kind of start at the top and work your, your way down if that makes sense lastly try to use the the talk to your stakeholders like what they're trying to achieve and hopefully the people that you've been working with have understood that it's very important that the names and the and similar entities and so forth in the code the these terms that you're using and the names that you're using they should mirror the language in the company so by just listening to what your co what your stakeholders are saying i need you to add foo and bar or whatever to the system and it's sort of like this other thing you should be able to find code that is relevant by simply searching for the terms that they have been using that's how you know that you're following good practices in terms of naming that's not going to be perfect, but it should be possible for you to figure out what code is relevant to change in order to accommodate those needs. Have a great day.